Hello, I'm sitting here at the Academy of Plato, and all my life I have studied the Greeks. I was the son of a missionary, Baptist missionary, so I was also steeped in the doctrine and theology of Judaism and Christianity. I've studied Islam, the Abrahamic religions the Eastern metaphysical traditions of Hinduism and Buddhism. And all my life I thought that those were the framework within which the deepest human inquiry could take shape. I've come to see that there is a deeper strain from which we can draw wisdom and illumination. If you study the Greeks, you'll learn that for not only Plato and Socrates, but also the pre-Socratics, Pythagoras, Parmenides, Empedocles, and others, they either were oracles of the dead or they participated in deep inquiries at the oracles of the dead. They engaged in a practice called incubation, where they would go down into subterranean caves and in complete darkness stay. Pythagoras, we are told, stayed for 30 days in complete darkness. And it was in that incubation that his great philosophical insights emerged. That was very true of Parmenides, who was considered the father of philosophy and metaphysics. Our world today is in a very deep crisis. All of us know that. Climate change is turning to climate shock. Our national leaders are incapable of wise decision making. Politics has become gridlock. Our crises deepen. All of us are looking to the future and all of us have this intuition that we're entering what I've been calling white water history. In the face of that, we at Wisdom University are beginning to be led to a deeper inquiry, deeper than the Greek philosophical tradition, deeper than the insights of the Abrahamic traditions or the Eastern metaphysical traditions and spiritual traditions. What gave rise to those? And more and more, we're being given to see that the Earth herself is the bedrock. We know from James Lovelock's Gaia theory that the Earth is a living, intelligent entity that over the billions of years and the eons of time has consciously, intentionally created the exactly right atmospheric and biological conditions to support an abundance of life that has given rise to us. This didn't come from the Greeks this didn't come from Muhammad or Jesus or Moses. This came from the primordial past. And so as we grapple with the great issues of our day, it is well worth our time to inquire at the deepest strands of wisdom itself. We believe that there's something like geomythology. There's a mythology that came from the ancient peoples. There's also the mythology that emanates from the earth herself. All over Greece you find a Greek temple and underneath that a primordial goddess. If you go to uh, eastern Turkey, you go to Urfa, 
where Abraham was born and gained his insight into monotheism 4,000 years ago. And yet right outside of Urfa, you can go to Gobekli Tepe that was built 8,000 years before Abraham. At a time where we assume they didn't even have pottery and they built monoliths like Stonehenge with hundreds of 10 ton blocks of stone. Who were those people? What gave them their wisdom? We know that those were the times of the shamans. We know that for 250,000 years, our kind in the Paleolithic period looked at the stars and crafted the zodiac. We know that humankind, going back to time immemorial, have had the same questions we have in the face of the mystery that is the cosmos, in the face of the mystery that is the human being, how we can produce, how we think, how we feel, how we can strategize, how we can deepen our awareness into the ground of being. So Wisdom University teaches all the great traditions, east and west, north and south, but what is coming up for us, which we invite you to participate in, is a new track called Earth Wisdom in the Primordial Mind. We have three aspects to it. One, led by Apila, Colorado, is in indigenous mind, which is a pathway of, of, of a journey into your ancestral lineage. Where do you come from? We're all indigenous from somewhere. The second track is led by Linda Tellington Jones on interspecies connections. The primordial was where all life, human life and non-human life, all the birds, all the fish, all the insects, all the mammals, humans are mammals, all communicated together. One of the greatest challenges of human beings today, and in fact, it may be even a key to our survival, is learning how to commune again with other species, with the earth herself. A third track is what we call eco-spirituality, led by Will Tegel and Judith Yost, that is really delving into eco-fields. How can you go to a place sit on a rock and commune with that rock. Are we sophisticated enough? Are we humble enough to sit on a rock and go beneath rational mind? Go beneath our inherited religious and philosophical traditions and simply commune with a rock? That's the primordial. That's the geo mytho poetic. And these three strands together, earth wisdom and the primordial mind, is the new frontier into which the Wisdom University community is entering. We would love to have you participate. We believe that at the, this moment in time, when everything human beings have built since Gobekli Tepe, 12,000 years ago, where the Neolithic and agricultural revolutions were ignited, is now called into question. And it is going to be our capacity to enter the primordial that will give us the enlargement of the soul that we need to navigate with confidence through whitewater history and give us the illuminations of wisdom so that we can build community and we can lead our communities into what we must now face.